The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So I just want to let you guys know, short biography. Um, I, was, I went to Gettysburg Seminary. I graduated and was ordained in 2008. I did about six and a half years of parish work, and now I serve as a chaplain for Wellspan over in York County. And that is what allows me to be free on Sunday mornings, because I leave here and go over there and take care of people over there. So let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Creator and Redeemer. Amen. Well, I have been thinking lately, I think a lot, it scares my husband, but I do. Um, and I've been thinking about relationships and how they are built and what makes them strong. And so in my work, especially, I had the opportunity to talk with people of all ages. And a similar theme keeps coming up. And that theme is stories. Relationships are built and sustained through the sharing of stories. As a kid, my family's kitchen was a meeting place for everybody. Uh, I'm the youngest of six kids, and so our kitchen table was massive. And there was always two or three people sitting around that table. And I can remember the visitors and my parents sharing stories through the night. One story would lead to another, and by the time it was, they were done, they had talked about everything from the day's activities to their favorite childhood memories. And in the process of sharing those stories, common ground was discovered. Laughter was shared, and a deep regard for the other was built. Those relationships that were formed around our kitchen table were cemented then by borrowing a cup of sugar or visiting someone who is sick or sending my brothers over to mow somebody's lawn or pull a few weeds. 
And now, 40 plus years later, my parents are living in a Masonic home in their hometown out near Philadelphia, and they have discovered that half of our neighborhood also lives in the Masonic village. So all of those relationships that were formed when they were young have just been revived with, hello, have you eaten yet? And off they go, sharing stories, and the years just slip away as the friendships are revived. Last week, I was filling in for a dear friend of mine who is serving over in West York. And as you remember, the gospel last week was about Mary and Martha, right? And the sermon that I preached talked about taking time, just taking time to sit with God and rest in the Lord. It was about making sure that in the midst of all our craziness, we not just listen to God, but be in relationship with God. Mary wasn't just being lazy that day when she was sitting with Jesus. She was becoming part of the story. So what does that have to do with today's gospel? Today's gospel tells the story of what our relationship with God looks like. The opening prayer that Jesus teaches the disciples, our Father, our, yeah, sorry, reminds us of the second commandment, which tells us not to take the name of the Lord in vain. It was incredible, it was shocking that Jesus would address God with such an intimate term as Father. In the Jewish faith, people don't even say that word. They don't even spell the word God. If you look at it, it's G D. Because the name of God is so holy, it is untouchable by humans. And yet here we are being invited by Jesus to call the Lord Father, a term that we typically in reserve for the man in our lives who has taken care of us and nurtured us and raised us to adulthood. Jesus is teaching us that we are in a unique relationship with God. We are the people who are loved and cared for by a God who is so incredible that by all rights, we don't deserve to even say his name. And that opening statement then sets the tone for the rest of the prayer. The petitions which follow are not meek requests. They are bold statements of what we expect from God. Only someone who is confident about their position would dare to address their superior in the way that we speak in the Lord's Prayer. But it's like this. When I was a teenager, I thought nothing of going to my parents and saying, Mom, my jeans have holes in them. When can we go get some more? There was never a question for me about whether or not they would buy me jeans. The only question was when would they buy them, right? And the same holds true for this prayer. It's an acknowledgement of what we know God will do for us. We are retelling the story of how God is at work, both in our lives and in the world. So then if you look at the next petition, your kingdom come, our focus moves a bit from our relationship with God to God's relationship with the world. And when we pray this petition, we are acknowledging the perfection that exists in heaven. And we are calling on God to bring that perfect love into this world in a permanent way. Jesus, of course, was our perfect example of love. And this petition expresses our longing for a time when all people are teachers and healers and when sharing love is the main priority in life. We will share this love. 
when everyone in the world has enough to eat. But this petition is about more than food. It is about sustenance. The term bread really refers to making sure that every person in the entire world has everything they need. It is about food security and fresh water. It is about clean, affordable housing and adequate transportation. It's about fair wages, equal opportunity for employment. And it is about making sure that mothers and their babies are safe and protected and cared for. It is about spreading God's love and peace throughout the world. And speaking of God's peace, what better way to begin to spread that than to forgive those who have hurt us in some way? We rely on God's grace and forgiveness, right? It's the foundation of our faith and our lives. It is the Lord's forgiveness which allows us to live our lives with joy. We hold that sure and certain knowledge even when we slip, when we wander off the path of righteousness, we know that God is right there waiting to welcome us back with open arms. God's model of constant love is one that we strive for in our own lives. And so it is our right, but our duty to work to forgive those who have hurt us in some way. I'm not saying it's easy. Some hurts run very deep, right? And they take a long time to heal. But we owe it to God and to humanity to work on forgiveness actively. It is the life story that God would want us to write, a story of love and healing for our fellow human beings. Well, now we have come to the last petition as it is written in Luke, and it's a hard one. I was thinking of skipping it, but I'm not. Because at face value, it looks as if we are asking God to keep us, to not let bad things happen to us. And the problem with that is that God does not cause bad things to happen. God is our Savior who lifts us out of the trials and temptations of our lives. So I like to think of this more as trials that God uses to help us to become closer to God, right? Things happen and God can use them in good ways. It always reminds me of a book that I read a long time ago, and I wish I could remember the name of it. I can't, but it has haunted me for probably 25 years. It's a story about a woman and her mother who went on vacation to Indonesia to heal their relationship. And one day the mother wasn't feeling well, so the daughter decides to take just a little day sailor, like a 10 foot sailboat, out and just sail around the island, right? Well, yes, yeah, she gets caught in a current and gets sailed out into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And so here she is on this 10-foot sailboat with a, bo a water bottle, a knapsack with a towel, and some suntan lotion. And that is all that she had. For three months, she survived on this boat in the Pacific Ocean because she consistently heard the voice of God guiding her through this trial. It was a trial. She encountered God in a very personal way in that voyage and her love for Christ became very strong. And I so admire her. But I also always pray then, when I think of it, I pray, Dear God, please make my heart 
so that you never have to work that hard to get my attention. This traditional prayer is offered by Jesus and it is a sample of how we might pray, but it is not by any means the only way that we can pray. People might have difficulty reciting the Lord's Prayer as it's written. People who grew up with an absent father or in an abusive home might have trouble connecting with that idea of father. Fortunately, there's something like it's over a hundred different words for God in the Bible, and you can pick any one that you like. Holy One, Creator, Healer, because God is big enough to understand and appreciate them all. The important thing is that we focus on the intent of our prayer, not just on the words that we use. So I'd like to finish up with a prayer that I use every Sunday over at the hospital. It's a variation of the Lord's Prayer. But as I pray it, I would invite you to listen for the themes that are very similar to our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Ground of all being, Mother of life, Father of the universe. Your name is sacred beyond speaking. May we know your presence. May your longings be our longings in heart and in action. May there be food for the human family today and for the whole earth community. Forgive us the falseness of what we have done as we forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our time of conflict, but lead us into new beginnings. For the light of life, the vitality of life, and the glory of life are yours, now and forever. Amen.